Okay, today I want to talk about finding matches inside of arrays. We can use a whole bunch of different methods. I've got a few of them listed here. Index of, contains, filter, and sum. We can use all these methods to figure out whether or not something exists inside of an array. Sometimes it depends on what kind of things are in the array. So in this first example, I've got a bunch of strings. So I have some names and I can use index of to find the match. So I'm looking to see where in the array Pam exists. And if it's found, this will come up as negative one, or sorry, if it's not found, this will come up as negative one. If it is found, it'll come up as the number. So zero, one, two, three, four. Three is the index number of this element. So I should get three and Pam being written up here. And then if you want to remove the element that you find, you can call splice using that position. And I'm going to log out the array after removing that one element. So first basic example, there it is. Three, Pam. So the position was three, it found it. That's what index of does. You can use the index of method with strings to find out where a certain character exists inside of a string. You can also use it with arrays to find out where an element exists inside of an array. Now, this is just working with strings. We can do the same thing with numbers, with booleans, and so on. But when you get into complex data types, things change a little bit. My next array here, movies, I have an array of objects. Each one's got an ID, and that's going to be the key that I would try to match on. So I could define here an object, which is the same as this second one in here. But if I try to actually log that out. So let's comment out these other log statements. When I run this, negative one is the response that I get, meaning it did not find a match because this is a different object than this one. The contents may be the same, but they are two different objects. And because of that, index of is not going to find the match for me. So how do I do this? Well, turn to some of our other methods filter and sum. Let's use filter as the first example. Filter is one that you can use very easily. If we take the array movies, we call filter on it. It's going to return to us a movie or sorry, a new array that has whatever we want extracted or deleted from the array. Let's uh, create a new variable here. Uh, matching movie. So let's say that's all I want is this one element. So this is the only one I'm going to return from the array. I'm going to have here a brand new array that contains only this. So how would we write that? Well, we've got the objects being passed in. I'm going to use an arrow function. Inside of here, we'll test to see if obj.id. So this variable here, obj, will represent each one of these elements. So if you've worked with filter before, you know how this works. This is it the first time, the second time it runs, it's going to have this. The third time the function runs, it's going to have this. The fourth time the function runs, it's going to have this. And so on all through the array. Now, if the ID of the one being passed in here matches the ID of this one that I'm trying to match, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll return false. Now, this should be a brand new array containing only the matching one that I want. So let's see if we get that. We can uh, log out matching movie and it is an array. So we have to put an index number in here. If it's the only thing in the array, it should be position zero. So let's test that out. Sure, there we go. It returned that object. So we did get it. The downside of doing filter is that I had to loop through the entire array regardless of where I found this. So if I create a variable here called iterations, I'll set that equal to zero. And then every time I call this function, I'm going to increment that number. write a little message to ourselves here to see how many times it looped. Now it found it on the first one, or sorry, the, the second time through, but how many times did we actually loop? 
6. So we had to go through every single element in here, regardless of the fact that we found it early on. Now you can imagine if this was an array that had 100,000 elements inside of it, that's a lot of looping to do, especially when it found it in the first or the second iteration. Now this is where we can use sum. This method sum returns a boolean. It really just says yes or no, I found it. It returns true as soon as it finds the first match. It'll return false for everything else. So if I do something that's very similar to what we had here. I will say let found equal movies.sum and the syntax is going to be pretty much the same as this but I'm also going to uh, pass in an index because I want to know what the numbers are. Let's do the same thing we did up here. We'll uh, increment through iterations. We better put iterations back to zero so we can get an accurate number here. Now, this function being run here by sum needs to return true or false. So when we find the match, we want to return true. So same syntax as we had before. If obj id equals man up dot id, and I should have used two or uh, three quotation three equal signs in both places here. So if those two match, I'm going to return true. If they don't, we return false. All right, now down here we will log out that we found it and I want to know how many times we looped. There we go. So we'll clear this, run it again true after looping two times. Much faster and okay I don't have the object that I was looking for but I do have the index number. I can right inside here keep track of this index number. So if I said uh, oh well here we'll, we'll reuse our variable pause from up here. We'll just come in when we find the match pause equals index that tells me the position in the array where this was found. So instead of logging out just that we found it, let's try this. Movies sub pause. This is the index number inside of this array where we found it. So try it out. And there it is. So we got the same result here we had to loop six times. The second one, using sum, we only had to loop twice. So this is a much more efficient way to do it. All right, so I hope that makes sense to you. I'll leave this code as a code just so you can download and play with it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.